Hey campers, it's 3.30, time for Coach's Corner. Coach Jen here, we've got a special guest today, Frank Zombo, should be able to see him. We're gonna start like we always do, in prayer. We're gonna take a prayer today from St. Joseph. There's a litany of St. Joseph. Give me a clap if you've ever heard of the Litany of St. Joseph. Give us a clap. There's a little reactions button on the bottom of the screen. Throw in a clap if you've ever heard of it. And if you haven't, that's okay. Some friends of mine and I are going through a consecration to St. Joseph because he's kind of the, he's kind of the unknown saint in the Catholic Church. And I'm going to read a little prayer, a little piece of the prayer from the Litany of St. Joseph. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph Most Just, pray for us. Joseph Most Chaste, pray for us. Joseph Most Prudent, pray for us. Joseph Most Courageous, pray for us. We've got a guy sitting with us today who's pretty courageous. He's going to talk to us about that virtue. It's also known as fortitude. Joseph Most Obedient, pray for us. Joseph Most Faithful, pray for us. Mirror of Patience, pray for us. Lover of Poverty, pray for us. Model of Workman, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. That's our prayer today. Thanks for coming, everybody. We're going to turn it over to Frank to introduce himself a little bit for us. Okay, well, Jen, thank you. Um, everybody, I appreciate you guys jumping on. Hopefully, in these next uh, 30 or 40 minutes or so, um, I can share with you guys some of the, uh, the things that helped me get to uh, becoming, I guess, a professional in the craft that I, I did my whole life, and that was football. Um, a little bit about myself. I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit. I went to uh, Central Michigan for college. I played there for five years. And then I was an undrafted free agent to the Green Bay Packers back in 2010. From there, I played three years with the Packers and then uh, played six years with the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, I was just kind of thinking back to all the years that I've played football. And I've been extremely lucky to be around some of the best coaches and best teams around. I might have a higher winning percentage than even somebody like Tom Brady. My worst year in the NFL was actually nine and seven. Uh, I missed the playoffs one year out of, uh, out of nine. Um, in nine and seven, that's still a winning record. Yeah, and that was my worst one ever. I mean, I've had some 15 and one seasons and uh, a lot of 12 and fours. Something you guys in uh, Chicago may not be too used to, you know what I mean? Because uh, us in Green Bay, we're uh, taking it to you guys a little bit. But no, I'm just messing around. I know Chicago. Hey, now. That's all right. I'm a big fan of Matt Nagy and, and all those guys over there. Um, but today, I mean, that, that's just kind of the, uh, the general. I, I currently live in the north suburbs of Detroit. Um, I have three little boys, five, three, and two. Um, they're keeping me young, and uh, even though I retired from football a year ago, they're still keeping me active, and, uh, and I'm enjoying that. Um, I have uh, uh, my wife. Uh, we've been together since high school, so we've actually been together for six, 17 years, actually more than half of our lives. She's the only, the only woman I've ever been with, and uh, we were married uh, seven years ago, and like I said, we got our three beautiful kids and uh, our forever home back in Michigan, and and, uh, and we're finally enjoying some of this Michigan weather like I'm sure you guys are enjoying over in Illinois. Um, today, obviously, I wish I was there in person with you guys to, to walk through some drills with you and to just talk with you if you guys had any questions. Um, with the times that we're dealing with, obviously, it's, it's been tough on everybody, but it's awesome that uh, some of your leadership over, over at your church are able to uh, get stuff like this going where we can still uh, communicate and uh, I can still get in front of you. Um, today, I kind of wanted to talk as best I can uh, about, about the proper way to tackle. Number one, for your safety. 
And number two is you don't want to be that one that's kind of exposed in front of a large group of people and missing like a big open field tackle. It's something that's very basic, but there's little tips that I can provide that can um, to help you be a better player and to help you be somebody that your teammates can count on and, uh, and to make that big player, that big tackle when you need to. And since I was an NFL linebacker, I thought, you know, it'd be something great to talk about is, is tackling. Um, after I talk about that, I would like to talk more about um, – I, I, like I said, I played nine years in the NFL. I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about my mindset and some of the, uh, the traits that I acquired over the years uh, to get to that point. So even if you have like a notepad, I think um, there's some things that I can share with you guys that I think if you wrap your mind around a little bit that can help you through high school, through college if you want it, or if you, know, um, if you had dreams of playing in the NFL, or it doesn't even have to be football. It can be the next stage in your life because these same traits apply whether you're um, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a football player, you want to be an astronaut, whatever you want to be, um, these are going to help you in that next, uh, these next stages of your life. So, uh, Jen, how does that sound for, uh, for uh, our itinerary today? That sounds great. So if you guys were listening, go get your notepads and a pen or a pencil, anything to write on. Maybe you can learn some things yeah. from Mr. Zombo today. Right. Mr. Uh, Frank. Uh, wait a minute now. We talked, we talked, I think, I think there was a little jab at the uh, Chicago Bears in there for a second. So we won a Super Bowl back in 1985. We, we talked to uh, Pat McCaskey the other day and, you know, he talked about the family business of, of the Chicago Bears that's still going yeah. strong. But I think uh, we only won one Super Bowl. I think you guys won a few more over in Green Bay. Can, do you have, did you get something for that? We did. So obviously the Bears has a, a tremendous franchise. I'm a huge fan of Matt Nagy. He's, he's a friend. Um, but yeah, I did play, like I said, in the, with, uh, with the Packers for three years. And we did take this one from the Chicago Bears in the uh, NFC Championship back in 2010, as you can see here. Then we went on to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers to win one of these. Um, and I'm going to talk to it about it a little bit more. But as an undrafted free agent, I was able to uh, start in that game, uh, played every defensive rep. And um, and yeah, I made some plays in that game to help us uh, to win one of these. So, um, congratulations! For that Thanks for showing us that. I'm sure they'll get one again here soon. All uh, right, let's let's teach a little something. Why don't you go? Yeah, up we'll to do. See, you got a board back there, yeah? Yeah, we'll do a little bit of X's and O's here, I guess. Thanks. Uh, so here you have obviously a sideline, right? And uh, I'm gonna do the best I can for. I'm not. I wish I could coach you guys in person, but I'm gonna do the best I can on a board and on a Zoom call. Um, I was always taught in football, and I don't know who's on this call, but you wanted to get your head across the ball. But what happens a lot of times, if you have a ball carrier who has a ball, and this is your sideline, you always want to force your opponent towards the sideline. This is, the sideline is your best friend in a situation like this, unless you know where some of your other teammates are at. So what we were always taught, if you're going left and you're trying to make a tackle, this is, this is me, or one of you trying to make a tackle on an open field guy, you want to keep that player on your left side. So if you're going left, keep them on your left. Keep them on your left shoulder. A lot of times you were taught, or I was even taught growing up, that you wanted to get your head on this side of the ball, which a lot of times when you do that, you aim across it, and people are able to cut back on you, allowing them to cut back inside, which is never good because they can get a lot more yards. But if you keep forcing that person out to the sideline, you either force them out of bounds, which is good, and it allows them not to be able to cut back on you, which is also important. Um, obviously, when you go to make a tackle, you want to have a nice low base. Working on that base requires you to hit the weights in the, in the off season, to work on your craft. You want to have nice, quick feet. And these are all things that you're not going to be able to work on during the game. These are the things you do during the summer months right now, during a camp, which I know we wish we were having right now, but we couldn't. But you can still practice with maybe a, a neighbor or a, a brother or a dad, mom, whatever it is, whoever's around you can practice these kind of open field tackles and just keeping a nice base. Um, and another thing I want to talk about, too, is when you do make that tackle, once you get really good at that, there's somebody that you guys may be familiar with called Charles Tillman. We, uh, we even in the NFL watched a lot of film on the way he – try to do this. There we go. He played is when he went to make a tackle – he would locate the ball, and these are all very quick second things, but he was able to punch the ball out on an opponent. So once you get really good at tackling, then you take it to the next level where you try to 
make a conscious effort to punch the ball out or try to rip the ball out, strip the ball up best you can, um, trying to get obviously the ball back for your for the offense. Time out. Yes. What is the question? Question is, can we go back to tackling for a second? Yeah. We talked. You talked about injuries. I think for a second about where to kind of place your head. Now it looks like we're reversed here. Here it's like we're looking in a mirror. So without talking left and right, can you just show us? If you're going after somebody to tackle them, where you want to put your head That's so that you point. don't get any neck injuries, maybe? Right, exactly. So safety is, is huge, especially when you're – even at the NFL level, you see it all over the place. But at a young age, just teaching the, the, the player at a young age to tackle the right way. And you always want to look at what you're hitting. The worst thing you can do is drop your head. Number two, one, it's not good for your neck strength. Number two – you're, gonna not, you're not being able to see what you're going to tackle. He can juke you or he can go around you or he or she can go around you. So you want to keep your head up, know what you're about to hit, and it helps with safety and it helps with you making that play. So, uh, Coach John, that was a great point. Yes. So keeping your head up and seeing what you're hitting is, uh, is a huge making a tackle. Along with your strong base, shooting your hands, and then when you do engage that person, trying to almost like a gator roll. If anyone's ever seen a an alligator or a crocodile take down like a wildebeest, how they kind of grab and then they roll, like a gator roll. We do the same thing in the NFL. You try to grab and roll to, uh, to obviously take their feet out and not let them uh, keep running. Time so out. I got to ask a question, but there's some listeners with us that probably want to ask some questions too. Is it okay sure. if they ask you some questions? Love it. Let's do it. Thank you. We'll give them a couple seconds. Okay. If anybody's got any questions about tackling out there. Hi. Hi, can you do me a favor please and um, turn your camera off for us? Yes. Thank you. All right, good job. Go ahead and uh, ask your question with your voice, please. Okay, so like, if you're coming like in the open field and they're like running towards the, and it's just like a one-on-one -on -one and they're running towards the middle, where, yeah. where do you go? Where do you go? So really, you gotta be able to count on where your partners are at or where your teammates are at. Um, obviously, you want to almost like call it like a vice tackle. So you kind of want to know where your partners are at, and either you—that's why communication is so valuable. Is so you, you know, I'm left, I'm left, I'm right, I'm right, or just kind of knowing the defensive scheme really well and studying and knowing where your part, your teammate should be at. But then you would leverage that person to go towards your teammates so you can vice tackle that, that person in the middle of the field. Um, now, if it's just you and that person, that's when you gotta work on that strong base and you gotta have quick feet and you gotta aim right at the belly button because no matter what they juke their heads or their shoulders, if you can see that belly button in their midpoint, you're gonna have to, you know, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of skill. Those are the hardest plays, the hardest tackles to make are those open field tackles. Um, and it's easy to get exposed in front of a group of a group of people. That's Does great... that answer your question, bud? Yes. It does. Okay, good. Great Thank question. you, Frank. All right, go ahead. Any other questions? Anybody out there have any other questions about tackling or about I've, anything? I've heard that you're supposed to tackle low. Yeah, I mean, the best way to enable a person from continuing to run is to take out their legs. Um, I, I, you always hear the, the story too, even in blocking, tackling, anything, the low man wins. And that comes with, you know, working out and always having like that strong base, that strong core is staying low and being able to stay low throughout a whole play. Um, there's an extent. Well, Frank, what, what do you mean by strong base and strong core? What does that mean? Can you show us? Like, can you stand up and maybe show us how you would tackle? 
So, I mean, I can sit in this position, you know, forever, you know, like in a, like a squatting position. Um, but I mean, that's how football is played is you always have a Bentley, you, you know, your feet shoulder width apart and you have, you know, that's how you're always, your how your base is. Um, you don't want to be straight up. You're not as athletic in that point. And, um, and then, I, you know, you don't want to go tackle too low. You don't want to really leave your feet and dive at people because they can jump over you or whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I always aimed at the belly button and just tried to remove like almost aimed between your knees and your uh, hips. And what do you, what do you hit them with when you go in with your, when you go to hit somebody's belly button, what do you hit them with? I'm hitting them with my shoulder. I'm hitting them with their shoulder pad. You don't want to hit with your neck. You don't want to hit with your head. Um, you want to aim with that shoulder pad, or if you can get arms, you know, and wrap them up. That was the, uh, that's the way to do it. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else out there got any questions? They don't have to be uh, just about tackling. They could be about something else. But I think uh, Frank has a little story he wants to share with us too. Because we talked about courage when we did that Litany to St. Joseph prayer. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a lot of you kids out there have a lot of courage for a lot of different things. But maybe Frank can talk to us about his story. Yeah, so let's go to that. Um, first off, if, you, if there are taking notes, um, so I, I was somebody who I, I played football for a very long time. I was very lucky to play in the NFL for nine years. I was tr truthfully not the most athletic. Um, I was never the best. I was a, obviously good enough football player, but I was never the best football player around. I've seen a lot of better athletes than I that didn't make it because either – they didn't do well in the classroom or they made wrong decisions off the field that caught up with them. And um, either colleges didn't pursue them or NFL teams nowadays are looking for high character um, players, high character guys that they can, um, you know, count on. And so there was, um, you got to have the whole package. You can't just be a good athlete. You got to be smart. You got to take care of yourself. And then, uh, and, um, and you got to be, um, you know, eat well, things like that. And there's a few traits that someone actually sent this to me a few months ago, but I felt like when I read it, it was basically speaking to me. And these are traits that require zero talent. So if you're going to take notes on anything, I think this is it. Um, being on time. These were little things that I always pride myself on being on time. And I still have anxiety about being on time, uh, work ethic, effort, body language, energy, attitude, passion, being coachable, doing the extra things, and then being prepared. Um, when I was an undrafted free agent for the Green Bay Packers, I was never scared about not making it. I was um, very low chance that, I mean, the, the Packers had just come off a playoff season. They had a very stacked team coming in as an undrafted free agent out of Central Michigan University, which is a pretty small school. I knew my chances of making it were really low. I was never scared of not making it. What I was most scared of was living with regret of not trying hard enough. Whereas if I didn't make it, two years goes by and I'm like, wow, I wish I would have studied harder. I wish I would have ran to the ball a little bit harder. Um, I wish I would have worked out more during that time. Those were, that's what I was more scared of. So when I was trying out for the Packers, yeah, I mean, even when I went back there and visited there a few months ago and they always make, they not make fun of me, but they always brought up like the study cards that I had. I had this deck of index cards that had every play and I would literally go through them all the time to make sure I always knew what to do. And I can, and being, one thing about being coachable is when they tell you what to do something with your hand placement or how you should come in for a sack, those are little things. But when a coach can count on you that when they call a play, you're going to do it the right way is huge in the NFL. And if and in college, high school, when coaches can count on you and your parents can count on you and they say, hey, I need you to take out the garbage, I need you to do this, that's a huge trait to, uh, to have. And, and being accountable in the NFL was big. Um, so, yeah, in the NFL, I, uh, I, I, even when I was in my year nine, uh, you can ask anybody at Kansas City, I, I was always in the weight room um, before people were after um, practice. I always tried to do more. And uh, studying was my biggest thing. I think I knew the playbook, if not better than some of the coaches, right? They would come to me and ask me things. So there was little things, not just being a football player, that you can do that requires zero talent um, that can enable you to, uh, to be the whole package 
And, um, and that's what I kind of thought. That was some of the main reasons why I was able to play nine years in the NFL. Um, that's awesome. I think we call that work ethic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, that's, that's what I call it anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's never give up, right? We, we had a session with the kids about, you know, you might not be the best, but as long as you can be the best version of yourself and keep learning, that's important because it can get you a long way, even if you're not the best athlete. No question. Um, I actually, going into high school, as a sophomore, there was three kids in my grade that got brought up to varsity, and I stayed on JV. And I always, you know, everyone always thought they were going to be, you know, the best players. And, you know, so yeah, I was overlooked almost as a sophomore coming into high school because there were some guys in my grade that were playing up and I wasn't. And, and you just got to accept your role. You can't get down on yourself. You can't quit, obviously. Um, so you just got to understand you got to keep fighting. You got to keep working. And then by the three, you know, by the end of high school, I was the team MVP, right? I mean, um, going into college, I went to Central Michigan where they didn't really have. And then another thing about my high school, when I went there, when I got there, we were like two and six. By the time I left, we were state runner up. Um, we finished the season like 11 and two. Uh, when I got to Central Michigan, not to say this is all me, but I'm just saying I've been around I've been around enough success, enough good coaches, enough people to understand what it takes to be successful in football. And I think that can, you know, carry over in, in life. Uh, when I got to Central Michigan, we were a team that we were going to get moved. To, we, it was a Division One school that they were going to move it to Division Two. And um, by the time I left there, again, it was a very small school. That was my only offer. Um, we had won three championships and we finished top 25 in all of college football. So, and then again, like I already told you about the Packers, I was an undrafted free agent probably not going to make the team. I was just kind of like, you know, just try hard enough. Hopefully I can make the practice squad. Um, by the end of my rookie year, I started in the Super Bowl and had a sack on Ben Roethlisberger in the third quarter and then played nine years in the NFL. So just because you may be overlooked or you might not be the guy or the starting quarterback now, kind of accept your role and keep working. Um, be coachable and all those things that I kind of brought up and, uh, and it'll pay off. But you don't have to be the best athlete always. Um, you can work, you can work out and you can train and you can, um, do little things, but that that help you. But um, that whole work ethic's going to come in. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So we've got about five minutes left because we're we o we only have that much time left for the. You've got to go. Five. I've got to go, et cetera. So I wanted to give the opportunity for maybe one or two more questions from the audience. Thank you, Frank. I think you've taught us a lot about courage and about. Uh, you know, building a team around you, trusting your teammates. Yeah. And I think that, uh, how do you block? How do you block? How do you block? That's when I play defense. No, um, <laughs> how do you block? He's saying it. Career, I had to play a lot of special teams, so I would block quite a bit. And blocking an open field, like when you're on kickoff return and you got to block those guys that are running full sprints on you, is a lot like making an open field tackle. You got to be patient. Um, you got to keep your hands inside. You got to have a strong core because you got to be able to move quick, and um, and it takes a lot of heart. I mean, it takes a lot to have to get out in front of a big human being while he's running a full sprint at you, and uh, and you know stick your body in front of him. And uh, but yeah, um, if you're talking about playing all line, I can't help you there. Uh, I would go against those are my uh, those are my enemies, I guess. But. Yeah, patience and uh, talk hard. about pressure, right? I mean, far out. You're a rookie. You're in the Super Bowl. You're protecting Aaron Rodgers. That'd be something. Yeah, <laughs> but you did it. So I was on defense. So I didn't. I didn't really protect Aaron Rodgers in practice. Oh, sorry. Your lineman, you your offensive lineman, protected Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, exactly. I was on the defensive side, so I was trying to tackle the quarterbacks. I was tackling Ben Roethlisberger and things like that. And did you get a sack in the Super Bowl? I did in the third quarter. Knocked him just out of field goal range, and they missed the field goal. Well done, though. An Only undrafted drafted. rookie getting a sack. sack in the That's Super Bowl. Cool. I, think, I think you're the only guy to do that. It's a good stat right there. If you guys ever play have trivia or whatever, then you should get that question right. <laughs> anyway, football is a team sport. So thank you so much for your time, Frank. I know that you've got a lot on your schedule. And like we always do. I have one more thing that I oh, want. Oh, yeah. To, and I always pride myself on this, too. And this is whenever you're around people. Someone told me this a few years back, and it has always stuck with me. 
you have a couple of people in this world, two types of people. You have fountains and you have drains. People who give off positive energy. And I've always felt like I've been someone that around my teammates, I've spread positive vibes and can be competitive and it's kind of pushed other people and we've all been successful together. And then there's people who are drains who are negative all the time, have poor body language um, and kind of steal energy from people. Try to be that one that's always promoting being a fountain, spreading that positive energy, that positive aura, and you will be more successful and then your people around you will be more successful and everyone all together will be just be happier. And uh, that's my two cents, but that's things I like to live my life by. Awesome. Good lesson. Thank you so much. Oh, we've got one more question. How has your faith helped you on your journey? Yeah. I thought about that today. I mean, I don't, I, I need to, I've traveled so much. I haven't established like a home base when it comes to like my home church that I go to church every Sunday. I think now that football is done and I'm not moving all over the country, we're going to start more. I have my moments that I, um, whether it's just a beautiful day and I'm staring out and I, I share that time with, with Christ and I thank him for everything that he's given me. Um, before running, I'll always miss this too, is before every game, I would run out of the tunnel. I'd take a kneel at the goal line and I would thank God for the position he put me in. I would thank him for my family and then thank him for my health and please, you know, watch over me and my teammates as we play this game. But I did that before every game and I always miss that moment of, you know, you got 70,000 people screaming nah, 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 and you're able to just take a knee at the goal line and have your, you know, 30 seconds with Christ. Um, but obviously he's, he's blessed me to, to, you know, be in that position to you know play football in a game. I love to be a kid basically until I was 32 years old. And uh, I'm extremely thankful and indebted to him for sure. Thank you. All right. We're going to end in prayer here in the name of the father and the son and the Holy spirit. Glory be to the father and to the son to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Frank. No problem. It was great. It went by too quick. Yeah, we'll have to do it again if you guys ever need me to. It did go by quick. What was your favorite gameplay experience? We got one question I think we missed. My favorite gameplay? What, like, favorite moment in a game? I guess, yeah. That moment of